Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special NEC Football Google Hangout presented by Geico to find out how you can save 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com. Well, it's good to be back here in the Google Hangout groove. You ask what makes this one so special? Well, we are speaking with one of the top receivers in the Northeast Conference, one of the top receivers in the football championship subdivision, in my opinion. And this man will be seen live in the first game of the NEC on ESPN3 package. It will kick off Saturday, October 10th, as Robert Morris welcomes Tyler Duby and Sacred Heart to Joe Walton Stadium. Of course, Paul Dettino, Kevin Gilbride, and John Schmelk will be on the call. They'll have all the action live, ESPN3, Saturday, 12 noon Eastern time. So it's actually pretty interesting. There'll be two guys with uh, Super Bowl rings, multiple Super Bowl rings, um, one in the booth with Coach Kevin Gilbride, and then, of course, Robert Morris head coach John Banizak uh, down on the field. And, of course, another reason to watch is our guest today, Tyler Doobie from Sacred Heart. Tyler, welcome. It's a pleasure to hang out with you. How's everything going up there in Fairfield today? It's going well. I mean, it's good to be back on the show. Glad to have you. Of course, uh, you made a couple of amazing catches last year, and it uh, got you a spot here on the Google Hangout. So now you're back. You're back for a fifth year at Sacred Heart and back for another Google Hangout. Uh, it is good to have you. I want to start out by asking you about your team about the state of the Pioneers right now. You're coming off a of bye week. What's the team's mindset? Are you ready for the start of Northeast Conference play on Saturday? Um, I mean, you know, we just came off two bad losses. Um, you know, those games really put us down, but I feel like after the bye week, uh, being able to learn from those games and um, being able to come back strong, have a good week of practice, uh, we all know that conference play starts up this week, so, um, you know, we're flying around uh, a little bit more in practice and stuff like that, so uh, I think we'll be ready on Saturday and when it comes to it. Now, you mentioned the non-conference portion of your schedule, and I know that the Pioneers would have liked to complete that with a 4-0 record, so obviously 2-2, two and two, not exactly – where you want it to be. But my question is, were there any things that the team accomplished during that non-conference schedule? Did you learn anything about yourselves? And uh, did you see any growth uh, during those first four games of the season? Uh, sure. I mean, I think we all realized that if we play like we did the past two games, not the first two games, then we're going to struggle. Um, you know, turn the ball over three, four times a game isn't going to help us win. Uh, uh, Double-digit penalties, um, you know, over 100 yards of penalties in a game is certainly not going to help us out, you know, when you're starting um, in first and 15, first and 20 on the offense. It's, it's really a struggle to get back and get a first down and get the, uh, get the drive going. So um, I, I think it's uh, when it comes down to it, it's all, you know, we have to protect the ball, create turnovers on defense, um, and just play the way we know how to play. So we know that the Pioneers are two-time defending NEC champions, and uh, certainly you lost some key members uh, from those championship runs, but there is no doubt you returned a lot of talent this year. Uh, do you think that the talent is still there for a third consecutive title and it just relies on whether or not you guys can clean up the penalties, take care of the football, and, and cut down on the mistakes. But do you see this as a talented enough team to go bring a third championship to Sacred Heart? Uh, I mean, coming off last year when you lose uh, 
certain guys like Gordon Hill, Troy Moore, uh, Jamie Martinez in the offensive line, Kashada Spence at running back. Um, you're you're going to see that uh, in play. So um, I think the guys that have come in have really stepped up, have done a, a good enough job. Um, you know, the, I think the talent's there. Uh, it all depends on how we play. Um, you know, every other team in the conference uh, has good talent on their team. So any team can beat whoever on any week. So I think it all just comes down to on who plays better on Sunday or on Saturdays, um, who's healthier, and who can take care of the ball. Now you mentioned a list of, of former players, Kashadis, Troy Moore, Gordon Hill, and the one thing we know about those names is that they were all leaders. Um, with those gentlemen having graduated, what do you see your role on this team? You're a fifth-year receiver. You have two championship rings. You have the all-conference distinction to your name. Do you see yourself as a leader? And if so, what have you been doing to try to lead this team back to the promised land? Uh, yeah, I definitely see myself as a leader. Um, you know, when it comes down to it, I have uh, the experience that I've been in, so it's it's easy to help other kids out, you know, uh, especially in the first games of the year when they might have a little nerves. Um, but I think the biggest thing leading comes from is at practice. Uh, you know, we have four days of practice a week, and that's when you really prepare for the game. So getting the guys going at practice um, to make sure we have a good practice, good um, good speed, good intensity, I think that's important for us. And um, I feel like that's, uh, that's uh, one of our main goals, to have good practices uh, throughout the week so then we can uh, translate to Saturdays. Now, we talk a little bit about leadership and having good practices, and it, it leads me to my question about the head man over there, Mark Nofri, um, two-time NEC Coach of the Year, known as, uh, as a motivator, as a teacher, as a leader. Can you share with us some insight on the effect – that Coach Nof's attitude has on this team. And um, you mentioned practice before and practicing hard and getting the most out of practice, setting an example in practice. Is that something that Coach Nof stresses? Is that one of his big points? Um, uh, practice hard, play hard, and, and you'll get results on Saturday? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we – uh, have a bad practice on a Tuesday. He won't shy away from it. He'll tell us we had a bad practice and we have to pick it up on Wednesday. Um, but the way he goes about things to tell us um, how he feels and stuff like that, it's it's not um, not a way to get us down, but to, to really pick us up. So that's where uh, his motivational skills come in. Um, you know, we want to play for him. We want to win for him because, uh, you know, just the way he um, – the way he – he uh, talks about everything and stuff like that. So um, I just think that when it comes down to it, uh, he always knows what he's talking about. So we kind of listen to him and um, rally around him. Now, as we wind down here today, I have to mention the fact that I'm speaking with maybe the best pair of hands uh, in the nation here. This guy, Tyler Duby, has made 32 career touchdown catches that leads all active NEC receivers. And the number of key catches, the clutch catches, are, are almost too many to count. I mean, right off the top of my head, I know last year, Duquesne, in the waning seconds, you catch the game-winning touchdown – that's a 23-20 win. You caught the winning touchdown, uh, what proved to be the winning touchdown in a win at CAA member Delaware. You caught the game-winning touchdown in the fourth quarter in what was essentially the NEC championship game against Bryant. Uh, all these clutch catches, um, we've almost, I know I've almost come to expect it. Oh, it's crunch time. Sacred Heart needs to score. They're going to Doobie. Um, and the defense has got to expect it too, but somehow you still make it happen. My question really is, how do you do it? 
And uh, also, which of those catches was your favorite, um, looking back on it? Oh, man. Um, I mean, first of all, you know, it's just all timing. You know, it's I was in the right position at the right time. We made the catch. Um, I really don't look at it as, like, a different catch than any other catch I ever made. So it's like it's the fourth quarter and I make a touchdown catch it's the same as if it's the first quarter. Um, you know, there's, there's really no difference to me. I mean, it might – way a little bit more on the outcome of the game but the way I, I go out on the field it's just if it's the fourth quarter if it's the first quarter it's all the same to me and I'm giving 100 percent all the time um my favorite catch it, it has to be the Bryant catch um cause, you know that clinched the our second uh NHC title in back-to-back years so um that it has to be my favorite catch I mean there's no other <laughs> other way to put it yeah crunch time fourth quarter sends you back to the playoffs. Um, I remember that. And that was actually our NEC football game of the week on ESPN3. That was our featured game last year, uh, that particular week. And as we know, you'll be in the featured game of the week this Saturday at Robert Morris. So no pressure or anything. But, um, I mean, we got to expect at least one touchdown, uh, maybe two. But, uh, no, with that said – um, I want to bring this uh, to the academic side for a minute. Um, you have graduated from Sacred Heart. Yes. You're a fifth-year senior. And as we spoke a little bit in the pre-hangout session that we had, you mentioned that you are working toward a master's degree. Um, in which discipline are you, are you studying right now? And uh, when you go ahead and complete that master's degree – where do you see yourself uh, in the next few years? Uh, well, right now I'm getting a, a general MBA with a concentration in finance. Um, I don't know, in the next couple of years, I'll probably uh, either do like financial analysis, um, maybe like investment banking, stuff like that, uh, just see where the road takes me. Now, any uh, thoughts about possibly coaching down the line? Uh, you want to go right to Wall Street and make the big bucks, or or do you love football so much that you want to coach eventually? And the only reason why I ask is just because the way you carry yourself, uh, it seems like uh, you would make a good coach. You know, you're a pretty even keeled guy, uh, never too high, never too low. Uh, is that something that you considered, or you just want to go right in and start making that money? Um, I don't know. I've thought about coaching. I haven't really – made a decision yet so i mean plan a plan b type stuff uh whatever i want to do i always have a backup plan so that's how i feel